Welcome to another audio segment version of the original mail edition. The Jake Hollow Guide on How to Persuade Women. Chapter 1 Four Steps. You can either take action, or you can hang back and hope for a miracle. Miracles are great, but they are so unpredictable. Peter F. Drucker. When you go out to certain places on a regular basis, it becomes your second home. It is a proven fact that the more you see someone, the more attractive they become. I call this attraction by familiarity. My friend Diablo Santana knows that flirting with women creates opportunities. Most guys put a huge amount of work into their interactions with women, pre-qualifying them to see if they are even interested in a sexual relationship and building everything toward asking them on a date. Today, it seems more women are only interested in sexual fun rather than a real relationship. It is almost like changing underwear. Flirting often has helped Diablo discover how responsive women are towards him, and it helps him find out if he has a chance at something or just a one-night stand. Roman Brave will tell you that any effective seducer knows women respond emotionally, not logically like men. Roman would add that the purpose of flirting is to make women have good, happy emotional feelings every time they see him. Roman does not talk about anything deep or heavy, but about fun and silly things. Women feel pleasure, and so does he. Intelligence, honesty, ability, likability, decency, loyalty, honor, respect and the list goes on, what do these mean to you? When I say, idealism becomes you, what goes through your mind? What if I say use your power of visualization constructively or mentally? Mentally picture the way you would like your life to be, then follow through with an appropriate set of actions. Does the way you would like your life to be, go through your mind? In other words, you cannot achieve your objective, unless you take the time to use your imagination and use visualization. In the meantime, I would like to offer you a subtle challenge, that will prompt you to do better than usual. Your accomplishment shall be greater, if you are willing to work with me as if we were teammates. You are required to understand fully, that negativity can and does sow seeds of discontent. You will apply yourself to this, otherwise, you will not benefit as much as you could from reading this book. Do you know anyone, who has an incredible ability to influence women? You may call him a charmer or a persuader a person who has charisma. Perhaps you know this person from work, or your favorite bar or club? This is a person, who does not seem to have any of the problems you have meeting and arousing women's interest. He has never had to cajole women into spending time with him. These women just seem happy to be with him. What does he know and have that you do not? No woman will be charmed unless she believes, what you say not only in the words but also your body language. You can seem to be the most sincere person, and yet have difficulty building a trusting relationship with women. For instance, men who are outrageous con artists always seem to be able to persuade women. They do it, however, through lies and deceit. One reason con artists get women is, because they are not worried about hurting them. They simply do not care. The jerk's lack of fear allows women to relax and their confidence helps women trust and makes these con artists more attractive. It is ironic that jerks, who hurt women the most, get sex by not worrying about it, while men who never hurt women cannot get sex. Why? Unfortunately, it is because men, who are afraid do not have the sense of freedom or the confidence, to be successful with women. They worry too much about an outcome, that may not come to be. Making you into a jerk is not what I am about. Nevertheless, I want to help you build the credibility that suits you. I am sure you have seen, or experienced meeting a truly charismatic person, and he had an uncanny ability to draw women to him. You most likely hated or envied this person, and assumed that he was born with this magical gift. Am I correct? These guys cannot teach you their skills of success with women, because they have no clue, how they are doing it. They just do it. Even if they did understand how, they most likely would not want to share their secrets with you. Would you blame them? What I want you to know is that there really is no magic involved. All they are really using are their people skills. You must improve your charisma. 
people like me may seem to be winging it and getting our viewpoints across with sheer personality, charm, and imagination. We are really just using a formula of success. I can teach you about what to do when things go wrong, how to charm and persuade the difficult woman, how to deal with women who are so angry with you that they cannot see straight, how to deal with that endless persuasion challenge that I call the come, that woman who just will not open up and talk to you. I have learned this art and hope that by the end, you will have acquired a new knowledge about the power that is so vital that you will wonder how you have ever managed without it. You have always possessed this power, it was there, but most likely dormant inside you. Learn how to be in the spirit of the game by being very sincere. A what to do and what not to do. Learn to analyze women closely. A how to reach inside their minds and, as a result, know exactly what will turn them on. Learn to develop the characteristics of a persuader, together with an irresistible charisma, a dynamite sense of humor, and an uncanny ability to remember names. Of a thing that will make her putty in your hands. In addition, finally, I will teach you some magical persuasion techniques on how to move impossible women. There will be certain people who may not look favorably upon my work or be dissatisfied with my presentation. It takes determination, persistence, and a strategy to find the right source. Make it your business to be in the know, and you will see that women will be charmed by your street smarts and professionalism in any venue. Some guys would call me Don Juan, because they saw firsthand how beautiful women found me appealing. It has never been because of my looks, but my natural charisma that catches women's interests. In other words, I have never been a Casanova. Like any new learning task, at some point, you will realize you get it. You will understand the details and comprehend the principles involved. You will suddenly know that you can do it without making a great effort. You will continue making situational changes and you will be faster, stronger and, as a result, smarter. Section 1. Charmer. Let us be realistic. Most charmers are consummate manipulators, who cover their cleverness by creating a mood of comfort and pleasure. As one, you would be deflecting your attention from yourself while focusing it on your target. You make women believe you understand them fully. You act as if you feel their pain and you adapt yourself to their moods. You make sure that the female target you want feels better about herself. As a charmer, you do not argue, fight, complain, or pester. You draw your women in with your indulgence, by making these women dependent on you, and your power grows from this. So, learn to cast this spell by aiming at women's primary weakness, their self-esteem and vanity. You must learn to listen, and observe the woman you have your eye on. Let her do most of the talking, so that she reveals more about herself in the process. As she speaks, you will find out more about her strengths and, more importantly, her weakness. In this moment, you can individualize your attention, appealing to her specific desires as well as tailoring your flatteries to her insecurities. By adapting and empathizing with her, you make her feel more special, this will validate her sense of self-worth. Making her feel special above every other woman will make her addicted to you. As a result, she will also grow dependent on you. Please her by listening to her concerns, while keeping her distracted from her problems. By doing this often, she will fall under your spell. Do not be too serious or critical, instead, be light-hearted and fun. Show that you are a calm, controlled person, yet full of life, and you will see how this will help you put her at ease. Never show any anger, ill-temper, vengefulness, or any disruptive emotions that may make her defensive or scared. If you have an adversary, now is your chance to show her your qualities of magnanimity and poise by letting your adversary get flustered or upset. Do not complain or make an effort to justify yourself. The contrast will redound to your favor. Be a man of your word. Anyone can make promises, but what you want is to set yourself apart by not only being charming, but also with your ability to come through in the end. Follow up on your promises with a definite action. If someone does you a favor, show some gratitude. Time is one of the greatest weapons a charmer has. As a charmer, you can be patient, 
while planning a long-term objective in your mind so that women will not resist you. You can widen your options in any situation. You can make women emotional, while you remain detached see James Bond 7 for instance. You will make these women feel grateful, happy, moved, or arrogant. That does not matter, as long as they feel something. An emotional female is a distracted person. Give them what they want, appeal to their needs, and make them feel superior to you. Physically beautiful women, who play on their beauty to create a sexually charged presence have very little power in the end. Her youth will fade, there will always be someone else younger and more beautiful. In any case, men get tired of beauty without grace. Women never get tired of having their self-worth validated. Learn of the power you can wield by making her feel she is more beautiful now than ever. Do not bring out your sexual presence to her, but create a vaguer, more indirect sense of excitement through flirtation a socialized sexuality that is constant, addictive, and never very satisfied. Now you are most likely saying, yeah, sure, not all women fall for that. You are right. There will be some women who are chronically insecure, hopelessly stubborn, or hysterical complainers. Nevertheless, you must see your ability to disarm these women. Once you do, it will prove an invaluable skill. You must be careful, though. If you are passive they will run all over you, if you are assertive, you shall make their monstrous qualities worse. So, be gracious and adapt to their every mood. Your surrender is a strategy, not a way of life. When the time comes, and it inevitably will, the tables will turn. Their aggression will land them in trouble, and that will put you in a position to rescue them. You may decide, however, that you have had enough, and move on. Your charm will prevent them from foreseeing any of this or growing suspicious. There are those who are immune to a charmer, particularly confident, cynical types who do not require validation. So do not even attempt to charm them. Show them that you are human and not a deceitful person. Section 2. Charisma. I have been told in the past, and more so lately by many people, especially strikingly beautiful, gorgeous women, that I have charisma. When I ask the question, what made you say this? They always respond with, your aura, the energy you radiate says you love women. They always say it with an innocent, flirtatious smile. I take it as a compliment. For a few years, I felt I had lost that aura. Around that time, I lost Jezebel to a younger version of myself, who resembled me so much I realized I was not watching or paying attention. My then friend and partner Jack made me realize my oversights. There was jealousy on their part. Yet, I have learned to forgive and move on. I have been in situations where I was not doing anything remarkable, just being myself, and women would just blurt out to me, you have charisma, and it is obvious you love women. These remarks are not just from women my age or older, but from younger women. The last time this happened was not too long ago in 2008, from three young, sexy, beautiful women by the name of Carol, Marjorie, and Melanie. It also came from two other gorgeous women, who were teaching separate classes on human behaviors named Tanya and Crystal. Tanya, Crystal, Marjorie, Melanie, and Carol, if you are reading this, thank you. You are all so in tune, you have intuition and I have much appreciation for you all. You all fit the ideal, of what I feel real women should be, confident, strong, intelligent, sexy, beautiful, in shape, and feminine all at the same time. Now to get back on track. Most women are excited by the presence of a charismatic man. Women see an inner quality, self-confidence, sexual energy, a sense of purpose, and contentment that most guys lack but most want to have. This quality radiates outward, permeating the gestures of charismatic men, and making guys like me seem extraordinary and superior. That makes women imagine there is more to us than meets the eye, to some we are gods, saints, love gurus, or stars. You have learned to heighten your charisma with a piercing gaze, a fiery oratory, and an air of mystery. You can seduce on a grand scale. You have certain qualities that are powerfully attractive and make you stand out. It can be your self-belief, your boldness, or your serenity. 
you keep these sources mysterious. You do not explain where this confidence or contentment comes from, but everyone feels it. It radiates outward without an appearance of conscious effort. Most women like to be led by men, particularly if you promise them adventure or prosperity. They lose themselves in your cuz, they become emotionally attached to you, feel more alive by believing in you, and they fall in love. I can hear you Shoshana thinking, get over yourself. I have lived out all my fantasies, and to tell you the truth, they were not worth it. Why? Certain fantasies should just stay fantasies. Each charismatic person has a basic quality, but not all are the same. Some have a purpose, like myself. I have a vision now of helping others, to become more than who they are, to become positive thinkers. It is a cause I feel very strongly about, and one I do not plan to sway from. I have helped more people in the past year than I have in over 40 years. People believe in my work and character. Those who had little faith have turned around when I displayed such confidence in dealing with their problems. They began to see me as their savior, someone with intense charisma. I helped them to see who they are and who they can be. Some say I am a mystery, but I express myself by contradiction. I can be kind and cruel, excitable and icily detached, close and distant, as well as approachable or elite. It is hard to fathom, women add richness to your character, and it makes people talk about you. You show your mysterious nature gradually so that word will spread. It may require keeping women at an arm's length, to keep them from figuring you out. Another aspect of mystery is your hint of the uncanny. The gifts that I have, the appearance of a guru, a teacher, a prophet, or a healer add to my aura. I have predicted many events that have become true which Jezebel or anyone close to me can tell you. When I was 10 years old I told my mother that when I grew up I would be married to a blonde American woman who would give me twins. This was one of many events that I was able to foretell. You must live out your ideas with love without caring about the consequences. Get lost in your own world. The key is that you must already have some deeply held values. And this part cannot be faked at least not without risking accusations of charlatanism that will destroy your charisma in the end. You live by what you believe. To a charismatic person, words are the quickest way to create emotional disturbance. They can elevate women or stir anger without referring to anything real. You have no fear of death, which makes you dangerously sexual to women. You are delightfully spontaneous. You do not like to plan. You give out a hint of these qualities that make you look more powerful than you are. You have this ease, and it results in an adaptability that shows your openness to experience. You must believe in something very strongly for it to animate all your gestures and have your eyes light up. You work to make yourself believable to others. You believe in causes. You will die for what you believe in. The depth of your conviction takes people by surprise. People are more and more isolated today, they long for communal experience. My work is to help you by you helping me. I want to give you my own fervent, contagious faith. I want to give you something to believe in. Whatever your belief is, it all comes from one energy field, supreme mind, consciousness, creative source, God, infinite intelligence, the universe, or whatever else you call it. You, as a charismatic person like me may seem needy or manipulative. That is not close to being the truth, however, charismatic people feed off others. The more charismatic you are, the more women and people in general want you around because of the charismatic energy you release. You are unconventional, and you have an air of adventure with risk that attracts bored women. You also take risks for the good of others. One big physical attribute to seducing women is your eyes. Without words, they reveal excitement, tension, and even detachment. Indirect communication is very critical for you as a charismatic person. You are poised and calm, nevertheless your eyes are magnetic and have a piercing gaze that disturbs your target's emotions, exerting force without words or action. Just my aggressive gaze can reduce my opponents to silence, my face frightens them. I am very content with myself and with my loved ones. Most see me as a happy person, 
an enlightened man. I do not require anything or anyone, since I feel fulfilled. People are naturally drawn to those who emit happiness like me, and they hope to catch it from us. They can see that I am happy without my having to tell them, just by seeing me at ease and comfortable. I am neither a seduction coach nor any longer a life coach. I'm a spiritual teacher. My essence is an overpowering emotion that communicates itself in my gestures, in my tone of voice, and in subtle signs that are more powerful because they are unspoken. I feel things more deeply than I did before my awakening, moreover, no emotion is more powerful and more capable of creating a charismatic reaction than hatred. To hate is simple, when you let negative influences affect you. I have learned that life is precious, and to turn this energy around. Express what others are afraid to express. Detention centers and prisons have taught charismatic people like me the art of oratory, as well as how to channel our emotions. Nothing is more charismatic than the sense that we are struggling with great emotion rather than simply giving into it. Erotic fatigue is a threat to you if you have charisma, for you often win love by acting as the savior, rescuing women from certain difficult circumstances. Yet, once they feel secure, you become less seductive to them. You show danger along with risk. You deliberately keep danger going. My passion, my anger, and my confidence may be charismatic, but I also know that too much charisma for too long will create fatigue, along with a desire for calmness and order. A better kind of charisma is created consciously, and is kept under control. When necessary, you can glow with confidence, fervor, and inspiration. Nevertheless, when the adventure is over, you can settle into a routine, not turning off the heat, but turning it down. Women will admire your self-control and adaptability. Women love affairs with charismatic people like you. It moves you closer to the habitual affection of a husband and wife. You will even have the leeway to look a little boring, a little simpler role, that can also seem charismatic if played correctly. You depend on success to keep it this way. It is smart to be practical along with being cautious. What is charisma? Charisma is a rare quality that makes women like you even, when they don't know much about you. It is this intangibility that makes women want to follow you, be around you, and have you influence them. That je ne sais quoi, flair causes women to see you from across a crowded room, and want to be with you. Charisma is a gift from the universe, that is a part of you. A higher being gave you the special talent. It is comparable to the ability to heal or prophesy. This special quality lets you capture the imagination of another person. This leads to inspiring support and devotion. Now here are a few questions for you. Would it not be great to walk into a room and immediately know that everyone there, especially members of the opposite sex, were aware of you? Would it not be great to walk up to a beautiful woman and know for sure that she is going to reach out to you? What about being in a place where there is an argument happening and you quietly say, this is what I think, and the whole room falls silent and listens. Would that not be great? Charisma is the quality that makes women like you. Good looks are not the reason, as you may think. Charisma is largely non-verbal, as is 93% of our ability to communicate. You can best understand charisma by understanding its opposite. You would least like to be with someone who is self-centered. You would most likely want to be with someone who has expanded her center to embrace the world around her. Being charismatic comes from expanding my center, so I am just as conscious of her as I am of myself. I believe in and want you to do the same, to always treat everyone you meet, not just women, as the most important person you will meet that day. In Chapter 5 99% Approach, I will be discussing this in the context of shaking or kissing a woman's hand. You should also train yourself to look deep into her eyes, and make a mental note of their color, and any other details, like the length and color of her hair and nails. You should even notice her makeup. You must learn the art of giving sincere compliments, because everyone cares what you think when it is positive. A smile is very important, so you also must work on your smile. When she smiles back at you, you will want to keep your smile a bit longer with a tilt of your head. I know that there are those that seem like they could care less, 
but watch them when they receive a sincere compliment, you will see a smile. Section 3. The Persuader. So what is persuasion? It is the ability to get her, to do what you want her to do, whether by reasoning, urging, compulsion, or induction. That translates into the ability to make something happen. Persuasion is a combination of factors, personal charisma, the ability to project personal standards that are inspiring, and deep understanding, that the essence of persuasion is that women will move in a given direction only, when they feel that it is in their best interests to make that move. The key, then, to effective persuasion is not to concentrate, on what you want to get from women. A persuader knows the secret is to focus on what you can give her, understanding that when you give women what they want, they will give you what you want. To achieve total satisfaction with women, you must figure out what your preferences are, and then find a woman who accommodates them. Some may provide warmth along with stability, some are risky and challenging. Some are structured, some are not. Some women may require a lot of socializing, while others may require quiet concentration. Do you know exactly what kind of woman suits you best? Have you ever even stopped and seriously thought about it? It is a good thing that there are so many different kinds of women, since you are so different in your abilities and priorities. Some of you love the fast pace of the chase and the hunt. You may be a person with high energy, a great smooth talker, who enjoys meeting many people. You use your excellent reasoning skills to persuade women to make their move, and you get much satisfaction out of meeting your goal and then some. You understand the formula, for every 50 women you talk to, you get 5 to 10, who will be interested in you. Moreover, out of those, you might sleep with a few, or find your dream girl for a long-term relationship. Therefore, even if you often hear no from the others, you never take their rejection personally. What you find energizing is getting, those who accept you and moving on to the next challenge. Maybe you like to deal with this differently. You may just enjoy talking to lots of people, however, you first like to establish a relationship with them. You like to help each woman find what will be truly right for her as well as for yourself. You may like to look for opportunities that will enable you to grow and experience personal success and satisfaction. You may be cautious rather than quick to determine whether or not she is interested in you before moving on to the next woman. You are not interested in having a relationship with someone who probably is not right for you by successfully pressuring her into giving it a shot. You are each different in what you require and desire, and your interests, skills, values, and personalities also differ. Unless both you and your woman have a similar personality type that you each find intrinsically enjoyable, it is likely to have a different, even opposite, effect on her. Section 4 8 Reasons for the Calm The calm is the woman who just will not talk. She will not respond to any of your suggestions, and you never know where you stand with her. Now, you must figure out why women like her will not talk. The funny thing is that there are only 8 reasons. 1. Obsession Addiction 2. Inhibition Shyness 3. Apathy Indifference 4. Anger Irritation 5. Evaluation Thinker 6. Stress Frugality 7. Time Pressure 8. Fear and Anxiety A woman cannot concentrate on what you are saying, because she is obsessed with another issue. Confront the problem, but do it gently. Some women will not talk simply because they are shy. Draw them out by asking open-ended questions who, what, where, when, why, and how. See if you can answer these questions with a yes or no. I love your outfit, where did you purchase it? When was the last time you had a good dinner? How do you do it you have such beautiful hair? Yes or no cannot answer these questions. Since you are asking these kinds of questions, she has to respond with something more than yes or no, do you agree? This forces her to elaborate, and this will draw her out of her shell. Or, as Jay Magaro will add, only thing that I have to say is that in my experience, if they're not very talkative, they'll keep pretty quiet even with open-ended questions. Like if you ask them, when was the last time you had a good dinner? They'll just say, 
I don't know. Or if you ask them what kind of music they like, they'll say everything. How do you blast through that? We both agree that you should just call them out on it and ask, you seem really shy tonight. Why is that? Some women are not talking because they just do not care. They are probably upset about something else that has happened. Romance them with talk of good things in life until they come back into focus. She will not talk to you, because she is still upset with you about something you did previously. Bring that repressed anger to the surface and get it out. She may be the type who likes to think things through. Be quiet. Do not distract her by talking while she is thinking it over. Some women are frugal, they get nervous about having to spend money or having you spend too much money. Some women have her entire day broken down into five-minute segments. For whatever reason, she is always in a rush. Some women get very talkative when they are scared, but most stop after a while. Quickly move to reassure her by telling her that she is safe. The very fact that you have begun reading this book is proof of your interest in acquiring my philosophy and the abilities that I teach. This book will help you achieve whatever goal you may have. All you have to do is cooperate with my philosophies with an open mind and follow the suggestions in this book, in addition to working on applying them in every situation in which you find yourself in life. Nevertheless, you must put my suggestions into full practice and not half-assed practice. In the long run, as you put my principles into full practice, you shall find your adventure, self-direction and vision will change you not only on the inside, but also on the outside. Now picture yourself clearly in your mind and hold on to that. You are successfully doing what you fear to do. Then concentrate steadily, with the image in your mind, on the benefits you will receive through your ability until it becomes a definite thought form. What you think is who you are, so by changing your thoughts, you can change your life. Therefore, it is essential for you to think positively about your chances to succeed. Your will to succeed is a vital part of your progress. Don't go into it half-heartedly, you need the enthusiasm to pursue your desire and the persistence to wear away mountains. But this will give you self-assurance. You will have absolutely no fear or doubt in believing you will succeed in what you clearly pictured in your mind. Section 5. Why Me? What I want to teach you is to take one small step at a time so that, gradually, you achieve a positive change. Now let's be realistic, most of you will make a commitment to change today. But most likely, your commitment is gone tomorrow, you agree? The correct, most successful method of achieving your objectives is the slow and steady approach. Gradual, yet consistent. As soon as you have become comfortable with one objective, it is time to start on the next, and so on and so forth. Then, through constant growth, slowly but surely you will become more knowledgeable, committed, fulfilled and happy in your faith. My friend, it does not matter where you start, as long as you are moving ahead in the right direction. As long as you are going up, you shall succeed in climbing your way to a safe journey. However, do not confuse your ego with instant gratification, and plunge yourself back into a pit. One day soon, you will come to realize your true personality, and you shall be utterly astounded. You will ask yourself repeatedly, how did I allow myself to cast such a beautiful, innocent soul into a dark and depressing pit? Not the excuse, why me? With every action, you either advance or obstruct the drama of redemption, you either reduce or enhance the power of negative energy. You must remember that something very real, an absolute is always at stake at every moment of your existence, as well as in every act you do. What is your opinion of yourself? Are you satisfied, as well as happy with the kind of person you are? Are you dissatisfied with aspects of yourself? People do not plan to fail, they just fail to plan. Section 6. Misconception. Most of you seem to have the misconception, that being successful with women is being able to see a woman and in less than 10 to 20 minutes have her naked in bed with you. Yes, this is possible, but not all the time. You cannot always be perfectly smooth. That is why I never take it personally and keep it real. I always observe my surroundings first and read people, before I make my move. 
I have learned to be patient. By learning this, you will be able to handle any situation and know how to interact, therefore, you will always be successful. Yes, I have had women in less than two minutes in clubs, in washrooms, or wherever. I have seen men who just met a hot woman, and the whole night he is warming her up. He buys her drinks, and even a rose. I wait for 15 to 20 minutes, before the club announces last call. I approach her and softly whisper in her ears, let's dance, because after you shall come home with me. I lead her to the dance floor, and even leave with her, and the guy she was with is pissed off. Most men are not clear, about what they want and expect from a woman. The last thing you want is to end up with someone you do not connect with if things get serious with her. You do not want to be blinded by lust, either. Seriously think about this. Section 7. Quotes to Remember. Avoid negative thinkers and dream stealers, for they cannot stop your imagination and hope. An idiot will repeat the same mistake. A wise person will learn and recognize his as well as others' past mistakes and will set out in order to be prepared. By living your life around your dreams, you shall live your life as it was originally supposed to be, just as in your favorite movie. However, live your life without dreams, and you will live a life full of discouragement, frustration, and problems. The system may take away my freedom, but it cannot ever take away my love of life. I want you to take a moment to find out if you are really here now. I would like you to stop reading, answer every question I've asked, then put down my book. I'm sure you found out that you are here a lot less than you knew. There is a lot of more than you know. What I am doing is bringing you back to the now, so that you stay focused. End of chapter 1 for...